Hello humans, my name is Kenyo Air Overload, and in this video I'm going to show you how to merge a style and a face together using the LoRa extraction method. And very soon you'll be able to have results like these without any training. Now what exactly is the LoRa extraction method? Well, it's basically a method that allows you to extract the training data from a stable diffusion model as a LoRa file, and then use it with every stable diffusion model, exactly like a normal LoRa file. And if you don't know what the LoRa file is, I highly suggest that you watch my previous video on the subject, otherwise you're not going to understand what I'll be doing in this video. And in this video, I'm going to be using the Koya SS GUI to do the LoRa extraction method, which is a very cool piece of software that I showed you how to install in my previous LoRa video. And since a lot of my future videos will be using that Koya SS GUI, I highly suggest that you install it right now. It's going to be very, very useful. Now then, before we start, why would you actually do this LoRa extraction method? Why is it so useful? Well, let's say for example that you have a stable diffusion model that you like and a character that you trained in Dreambooth. And you want to use that character's face with the style of the stable diffusion model. How can you do that? Well, there is basically two ways of doing this. The first is the checkpoint merger tool inside stable diffusion, where you can merge multiple stable diffusion models together, where in the end you should have a merged stable diffusion model that takes around 4 gigabytes of space on your computer. And if you want to again merge your character with another stable diffusion model, you need to do this procedure all over again, which is really not convenient. However, using the extract LoRa option inside the Koya SS GUI, we can extract the training files from a stable diffusion model and then use the LoRa file inside stable diffusion with any model that you want for a pretty fantastic and easy result. Now, just in case in this video, I will still show you how to do the checkpoint merger option, just in case you want to use it, but I will be mainly focusing on the LoRa extraction method because it's very easy, it's very fast, and once you've done it once, you never have to do it ever again, which is really, really super useful. Alright, to begin we need to choose a character that you want to extract the LoRa from. So for this example, let's actually take the Luna Love Good model that you can find on cv.ai and then click on download. Then you're gonna take that model, go inside your Stable Diffusion Web UI folder, into Models, Stable Diffusion, and then paste your model right here. So then we're gonna make sure that the model is working correctly. So come here, select the Luna model, make sure that you have the right trigger words, or just come here and copy the generation data, paste it right here, click on Read Generation Parameters from Prompt, and then click generate. And as you can see, indeed, the model is working perfectly, meaning that now we can extract a LoRa file from that stable diffusion model. So for this, you're gonna go inside your Koya SS GUI folder, double click on GUI.bat, click on the local URL, and here inside the Koya SS GUI, you're gonna click on utilities, and then extract LoRa. And this is the utility that we're going to be using to extract the LoRa file from a stable diffusion model. So here, for fine tune model, you're going to come here and select the Luna model. So mine is models, stable diffusion, Luna v1, and then click open. Here is going to ask you the stable diffusion base model. Now if you go back to see with AI on the model page, you can see here that the base model that was used was the stable diffusion 1.5. So in that case, we need to select the stable diffusion 1.5 model. So you're going to come here. Select the V15 pruned, then click open, then save to. This is the path where you want to save the extracted LoRa file. And in my case, I want to extract it into models, LoRa. And here you're going to input a name for your LoRa file. So in my case, it's going to be lunalora.savetensors. And I highly suggest that you choose the save tensor format and then click save. So for the save precision, you're going to come here and choose the FP16. The network dimension, you're going to leave it at 8 by default. So you can play around with that a little bit. But for my testing, the higher the number, the more chances you're going to have artifacts on your image. So I would personally choose 8 for the network dimension, just leave it at default, it is perfectly fine. Now here, if our base model was the stable diffusion 2.0 or the 2.1, you would have to check this checkbox right here. But since our base model is the 1.5, you do not need to touch this checkbox. So just leave everything else by default and then click on extract LoRa model. And there you go, in only 45 seconds, we extracted a LoRa file from our stable diffusion model. And now if we go inside models, LoRa, you will see our Luna LoRa file. That only weighs 9 megabytes. And now if we go inside Stable Diffusion and we click on Show Extra Networks, then we click on LoRa, click on Refresh, you're gonna see our Luna LoRa file right here that we can use exactly like any normal LoRa file that we have right here. 
and to use it, it's very simple. First, you're gonna write your prompt, and let me actually generate to show you the final result. So this is the final generated image, just a basic, very beautiful woman, nothing special. And now to be able to use the LoRa file that we just extracted, I'm gonna click here on show extra networks, click on LoRa, and then click on the LoRa file. And as you can see right here, it has inserted a little text that basically calls out the name of our LoRa file. But for this method, this is not enough. Because if I click on close and then click on generate, you see that yes, indeed, this character is starting to look like our character, but it still doesn't really look like Luna Lovegood. And that is because we forgot to insert the trigger words. So exactly like a normal stable diffusion model, you need to use the trigger words to be able to generate images of your character. And in our case, the trigger words is Luna. So let me just click here to copy the word. I'm gonna paste it right here. And now if I click on generate, this is the final result, which is definitely way closer to our Luna Lovegood character. And it's as simple as that. And now what's really great is that you don't need to do this procedure all over again. If you want to mix the character's face with another stable diffusion model, all you have to do is just come here, select another stable diffusion model, and you're done. And if I choose another seed and then click on generate, it gives me something like this, which is very cool. And you can of course do this with any stable diffusion models in any character you want. Now keep in mind however that for some LoRa files you might need to increase the weight for the file to have any effect. So for example in my case if I choose this one which is a LoRa file that was extracted from a dream booth training of Wednesday Adams. If I input the trigger words and I click generate it gives me something like this which is not bad but it's still lacking a little bit of resemblance to Wednesday Adams. But now if I come here and I input 1.8 for example instead of 1 and I click generate you see now that the character is definitely looking like Wednesday Adams. So again for certain LoRa file you might want to increase that weight a little bit so that you see the effect. Now as I said you can use this LoRa extraction method with any stable diffusion models meaning that not only you can use this on any character model that you want but also on any stable diffusion model that you want. So you could, for example, choose the Protogen V2.2 model, extract a LoRa style file from that model, and then use it inside stable diffusion alongside your LoRa character file. So for example, let me do the same procedure with the Protogen V2.2 model. I'm gonna come here, select the Protogen model, click open, since we know that the base stable diffusion model that was used was the 1.5, I don't need to change anything. And here, all I need is just change the name of my file. And I'm gonna call mine Protogen LoRa, and then click save. And everything else I'm gonna leave by default, and then finally click on extract LoRa model. So again, very quickly, in only 45 seconds, we extracted the LoRa file from the stable diffusion model. If we again go back to the models folder, into LoRa, you will see right here our Protogen LoRa file which is again only 9 megabytes. And then again, back in Stable Diffusion, show extra networks, and then click on Protogen LoRa. Then again, make sure that we're using the right trigger words. So in this case, it's model shoot style. Paste it right here. So this is the before, and this is the after. And as you can see right here, we have applied a little bit of that Protogen model style onto our image using a small LoRa file. And again, if you want more effect from that Protogen LoRa file, all you have to do is just increase the weight. So let's say, for example, instead of 1, I'm gonna put 1.9. And if I click Generate, it gives me something like this. Really, really nice. And again, you can do this for any stable diffusion models, and you can mix and match different models together as LoRa files inside the stable diffusion prompt, which again gives you even more options to create absolutely beautiful images inside stable diffusion. Now, if you want, for example, to have a stable diffusion model using the checkpoint merger tool, here's how to do it. So in the primary model, you're gonna choose the model that you want to use the style from. So let's say I want again to use the Protogen V2.2. In the secondary model, you want to use the stable diffusion model of your character. So again, let's take for example the Luna model, the Luna model that we downloaded from cv.ai. For the tertiary model, you're gonna use the stable diffusion 1.5 which if you remember was the stable diffusion model that was used as a base to train the Luna model. So you're gonna come here and choose the 1.5. Then you're gonna input a custom name. So I'm gonna call mine Protogen Luna. Then for the multiplier, you're gonna input one, select add a difference. And what this will do, as you can see right here with the formula, is that this add difference is basically gonna subtract the 1.5 parameters from the Luna V1 and only leave the Luna V1 with the Luna training. Then it's going to multiply that model with the multiplier that you see right here. So it's 1. 
and then it's only basically gonna merge the Luna training parameters from that Luna model to the Protogen V2.2. So in the end, it should basically only give you a Protogen V2.2 model with only the Luna training parameters and nothing else. So then you're gonna choose Safe Tensors, leave everything else by default, and then click on Merge. And there we go, as you can see, we have now a brand new Protogen Luna model that you can use inside Stable Diffusion. And to use it, you're gonna come here, select the model that we just created, which was the Protogen Luna. Make sure that you're using the trigger words for both the Protogen V2.2 model and the Luna model inside your prompt, as you can see right here, Model Shoot Style in Luna, and then click Generate. And this is the final result. Definitely looks like her. So this merging was indeed a success. Also, if for some reason you get weird artifacts in the face, it's either because your CFG scale is too high or your sampling steps is too low. So either decrease the CFG scale to something like 5, or increase the sampling steps. That's really up to you. Now this checkpoint merger option is very cool, very powerful, also very easy to use, but unless you want to create 4GB file each time that you want to merge it with another model, I highly suggest that you try the Extract LoRa option first. It is very easy to use and can work with any model that you want. And there we have it folks, thank you guys so much for watching, don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, and I'll see you guys next time, bye bye!